Well guys, welcome back for another episode of Seeking Discovery. In the last video, you saw that I was able to get the rest of the ceiling panels out of my bus, and today's project isn't as exciting, but it's cleanup, and it's necessary. I need kind of a blank canvas to keep moving forward, so the goal for today is to clean up everything that's just kind of laying around, collect all the tools, and then also start working on getting rid of the extra wiring. And so that's things from like the speakers, the lights, the locking system, all of those wires will be removed because I no longer need them, and it'll get rid of some of the bulk and extra stuff just laying around. So come along as I work on cleaning out the bus and getting it ready for the next step of turning it into a tiny house. Welcome to Seeking Discovery. I'm Ryan, and I have a passion for travel and building things. At the end of 2020, I decided it'd be a great idea to purchase my very own school bus to convert into a tiny house. So come along as I make mistakes, learn a lot, and make lasting memories turning this old bus into a new tiny home. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along on all the adventures. I look forward to sharing this with all of you. And as always, continue to explore every day. So project update for today, we've got everything pretty much cleaned up and it's looking really good right now. You can see behind me, I got the front panel out of the bus. And the reason that I did that is there's a lot of room that can be turned into storage up there. So I'm really glad that I got that out. And if we walk towards the back of the bus and I flip you guys around, you can see I sweeped the floor, got rid of all the crud and we've got all the windows open, airing out, and now we've got some of these hanging wires out. So the next goal is to start finding the ones like these, which were speaker and light wires, and these will be cut out and removed from what I call the umbilical cord of the bus so that that gets smaller and we have less wires hanging out that are no longer in use. The other thing that I noticed is when I started cutting wires, I did lose power to the control panel next to the driver area. So I'm hoping by tracing all of these wires, getting them removed from the system, that I can figure out how to restore power there so that I can get the ACs under control again, as well as make sure all my lights and everything else are working. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on these wires and see how far I can get today. Um, I've got about another three or four hours of daylight, so I should be able to get pretty far. So let's do this. Day one of working on getting the electrical wires and all that kind of figured out and taken care of is wrapping up. I've got some other stuff to take care of tonight, but as you can see, the large cord is now many wires and I've already started pulling some of them. I've got them kind of taped and labeled down there so I know what they are, where they came from. And ultimately there's a, I have to take off a panel here and a panel there in the seatbelt mount. And then I can access the rest of the area where the wires are. So that'll be the goal next time I'm out here working on the bus is to get those panels off and keep working on the wiring. And today I noticed that the side running lights are not on when the bus is running, um, but the bus started. So that's still a good sign that I haven't made too many mistakes or caused too many issues with pulling these wires. So if you like this kind of content, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, leave a comment below what you want to see next, and be sure to subscribe so you can see the school bus become a tiny house. We'll see you guys in the next video.